America's mighty M1 Abrams tank and Russia's lethal T90. Who wins in Ukraine? This could be the ultimate tank battle. So, let's start. Created during the 1970s, the Abrams tank has been the cornerstone of the U.S. Army's armored division for over three decades. Since its inception, the M1 has undergone various upgrades, including the installation of a 120mm gun, an upgrade from the original 105mm weapon, and advanced armor. Its interior has transformed, with the latest M1 and 2 SCPV machines being entirely digital and networked. To keep up with technology, the U.S. Army intends to design a new model, the M1-3, which will not only improve the tank's performance but also reduce its ever-increasing weight, a consequence of multiple updates. However, tank technology hasn't been stagnant elsewhere in the world. Although the Soviet Union has been dissolved, and the likelihood of a significant Tread Army assault through Germany's Fulda Gap is now improbable. Russia has continued to develop its tanks, including the impressive T-90. Nevertheless, most Western force is no longer prioritize main battle tanks as they once did. The T-90 is a descendant of the T-72 which the Russian government chose after the T-80's failure during the Chechen Wars. The T-90 is essentially an upgraded T-72 with advanced T-80U features but replaces the troublesome gas turbine engine with a 1,000 horsepower diesel engine, resulting in a suboptimal power-to-weight ratio. It comes with a new laminated armor package, explosive reactive armor and an electronic countermeasure suite, along with the standard 125mm gun. Overall, it's a highly impressive tank, a significant upgrade from previous Russian models. On a one-to-one -one basis, the M102 tank design still reigns supreme, although it comes with a heftier price tag. The United States Armored Warfare Strategy prioritizes preemptive action and a first strike advantage, which stems from extensive research over the years. The Abrams tank is constructed with this strategy in mind. When it comes to a tank versus tank comparison, the M1 has several advantages. These include its state-of-the-art sensor and fire control suite continually advancing armor mate rigs composed of depleted uranium, and the M829 Sabo rounds, which pack a powerful punch. The latest iteration of these rounds, the M829, it is largely credited for the ease with which the U.S. Army penetrated Iraqi armor during the first Gulf War, and it significantly increases the lethality of the Abrams M256 120mm cannon. The M1 and 2 SCPV ANC is always under development, and research and development efforts are currently focused on enhancing networking, mobility, and protection. Meanwhile, plans are underway to commence full-scale development of the M1 and 3 in a few years which will improve nearly every aspect of the Abrams tank. This new variant of the Abrams should be significantly lighter and more mobile, while also featuring enhanced armor protection. It will also include vastly improved computer systems and sensors. The examination of both tanks can be categorized into several aspects, including armor, engine, range and speed, and armament. For a more technical comparison, firstly, with regards to armor, the T90 boasts an overall better hull armor as compared to the M102 Abrams. 
Although the M-102 Abrams has a UFP armor of about 780mm APFSDS and 600-700mm heat, the T-90A has a steel composite reactive blend armor, which provides better protection. However, it is worth noting that a significant amount of tank warfare occurs in hull-down position wherein only the turret is exposed. And in this aspect, the Abrams is superior. The turret cheeks of the Abrams are impenetrable to the T-90's rounds, while the M102 can penetrate the mantlet of the T-90 at most ranges, killing at least one crew member and disabling the breach. Moreover, the T-90 has a tightly packed crew and autoloader, which means most penetrations will result in a knockout. While the M102 spacious interior makes it more likely to survive even a few successful hits. In terms of the engine, the M102 Abrams employs a Honeywell 1500 OG in multi-fuel turbine engine with a horsepower of 1500. Meanwhile, the T90 is V92 S2 engines manufactured by your Alvagon Zavad, have a lower horsepower of about 1,000. Regarding the range and speed, the T-90 is one of the main battle tanks with the longest operational range, capable of covering about 650 to 700 kilometers, significantly more than the M-102 Abrams, which can only cover 426 kilometers. The T-90A also has a slightly better speed compared to the M-102 Abrams. The on-road speed of the M-102 Abrams is 56 km per hour, and off-road speed is 40 km per hour, whereas the T-90A's on-road speed is 65 km per hour and off-road speed is 45 km per hour. Lastly, for armament, the main armament of the M102 is the M256 one 120mm smoothbore gun, designed by Rhein Metallag of Germany, with 42 rounds. The rate of fire of the M256 one depends on the loader, and it can surpass the T90 because of this. The M256's effective range is 4,000 meters. The M2561 has a much better APFSDS round than the T90 and also is capable of using a Sabode heat VD shell for use against helicopters and other low flying targets. The secondary armament consists of one 12.7mm M12 heavy machine gun and two 7.62mm M240s. On the other hand, the T90O's main armament is the 2A46 125mm smooth burr gun with 43 rounds, which effective range is 5,000 meters. The 2A46 is an auto-loaded gun, allowing it to shoot at a fixed rate of 8 rounds per minute, which can be an advantage for the T90. The 2A46 features an inferior APFSDS round to the Abrams but also has access to a specialized tandem gun launch TDGM. The secondary armament is one 12.7mm NSV heavy machine gun and one 7.62mm PKD. Conclusion the T90 Roa tank surmounts the M102 Abrams in terms of speed and range. However, the M102 Abrams holds an advantage in terms of its engine. The armaments of both tanks can be considered equal, as the T90O's main gun is auto-loaded and has an anti-tank guided missile ADGM, while the M102 Abrams can fire more effective armor-piercing and stabilized discarding Sabo APFSDS rounds and can be loaded more swiftly. The armor of both tanks can also be deemed comparable, with the T90 having an edge in close quarters combat while the Abrams is superior at range when in hold-down position. And 
It is crucial to note that developing a new M1-3 variant or even replacing the M1-2 Abrams is not a top priority for the United States Army. After the withdrawal of U.S. ground forces from Iraq and Afghanistan and the focus on the Pacific theater, the Army is looking for ways to carve out its unique position. Despite Russia's actions in Ukraine, it is not expected that the United States will engage in another large conventional and war in the foreseeable future. As such, the most plausible scenario for U.S. forces to encounter a T-908 Inc. would be in a hybrid war, and there may be more cost-effective ways to deal with isolated pockets of enemy armor. Thank you for watching. If you found this content informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Sensational Tech Channel for more exciting content on technology, engineering, and science. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.